<laughs> what I would tell a young dentist, if you're not making mistakes, you're not practicing dentistry. <laughs> um, and it's mostly through our mistakes that we learn. And when we uh, have made a mistake and we can recognize that mistake and we can identify what were the um, what, what were the issues that arose that ended up making that mistake, then we can change and we move on and become better for it. But if you never make a mistake, you're never going to become better. I think it's useful for me to actually give you a pers an example, particularly with FOP, as to... Um, one of the major mistakes that I made, and it's not related necessarily to the dental treatment as it is to the um, psychological approach. So um, this is a individual who I've been working with for oh, a number of years, say eight, nine years. And so she's grown up with me as a patient. And one of the things that we need to be very careful about and what the mistake I made is that one day I essentially identified her as a person, as, as an FOP person rather than a person with FOP. And so to be clear, what did I do? I everything that I would speak to her about or speak to the parents about was all related to the disease process. So, you know, when I, when I said, you know, you say hello to them and you're immediately going into the issues with the parents of um, when was the last triggering result, what's been going on, how's it going, and I forgot that there was a young adolescent sitting there and a young girl who is having her own issues going to school, having problems with whatever it is. She can no longer walk. She has to be in a wheelchair. And what occurred to me was that I was perseverating on the disease process, on the disability process, and I kind of forgot that there was a young kid underneath all of that, that had emotions and fears and um, of any normal adolescent. And, um, you know, the parents become very, very intense and they want to give you all the information. And when you highlight all of that stuff, then it's, it's in the best interest of the patient, but it's not really in their best interest because then you are highlighting the disability, you're not highlighting the person themselves. Ladies and gentlemen, that was our first guest, Dr. Clive Friedman. Our next guest, all the way from Argentina, is Dr. Gabriela Scaniet. Gabriela, like Clive, has worked with the IFOPA and is an active advocate for propagating dental care among patients with FOP all over South America. Please welcome Gabriela. Thing about FOP and uh, um, Moira is the president of the FOP Association in Argentina and she is very active and she's always organizing courses and um, she invited me and, and, and the team to to know uh, for first time for me the, the all the researchers from Philadelphia in Buenos Aires in uh, 2011 I think in the second Latin American uh, FOP Congress and then I uh, have the opportunity to treat uh, the first ch children, the first child with FOP, and to to uh, we have done a lot of screenings from uh, children from all Latin America. From I remember from Venezuela to Argentina, uh, we have seen about 25, and it's a, it's a 
a big number for this disease. And the, the idea was uh, to uh, the call for action that we are doing now because uh, there are very few people in Argentina but uh, dentists uh, really uh, doesn't know anything about how to treat them. So uh, from, from this time with her and with the, the patients, I learned a lot and I began to, to search and began to my first uh, steps uh, treating uh, children with FOP. That that was the experience. So I, I, I permanently I am in contact with Moira, the president, and sometimes ask for some re, uh, new uh, news about uh, the what the researchers are doing. And then last year it was the time of the third Latin American. Um, Congress and uh, Clive Kahn and really we have uh, uh, done a very good team treating and, and, and seeing a lot of uh, people at uh, different ages in this case not only children uh, and of course we, we began to, to, to work about uh, the updated of the guidelines so uh, for that we, we began to to keep in touch with dentists from different uh, countries in Latin America because there were more more patients than the first uh, Congress. So that is, is, is a very good thing to, to organize this kind of uh, conference because not only families and, and, and patients have the all the news and uh, all the the day the, the, they need. So we spent like a weekend, everybody, and uh, in in one day and a half, uh, we can do all the screenings of the of the patients and try to help. How because maybe they live not uh, not um, uh, next to the, the the big cities or where the the dentists can can treat them in the in the in a good uh, way so uh, we try to connect with them with via email whatsapp uh, fortunately uh, during this time we can do that and help a lot uh, uh, despite the distance five families in my country uh, and besides that they were uh, in contact with the association and 25 uh, in all the country and my country is big so uh, it, for them is a uh, great effort to come to Buenos Aires the capital maybe 25 because the the um, I, I think that there is not a good experience when they have uh, the problems like the ankylosis uh, very very in, in, in this case uh, we the, the, the challenge here in Argentina was to get a team of uh, surgeons who um, uh, learned about how the anesthetic had to to, to, to do and, uh, and and was uh, the, the first case we we can treat a, a patient uh, under GA uh, and solve the problem and she's a really uh, very keen and we learned a lot from from her because he's a lawyer she's a lawyer he works a lot uh, and she's really have a, a very good uh, a mood and a spirit despite he, she cannot uh, move anything <laughs> of uh, the body. Uh, yes. it's, a, it's the most common in, in Argentina, all, uh, not, not all the, the patients here in the country, but um, those who really didn't know about uh, to, the prevention procedures uh, all have uh, in different levels some ankylosis. This, this was the, the, the worst case we have and we, we could so solve it but um, uh, in the children really and we, we the, 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 I think that the big 
think the great thing was that we can see a lot of babies. So uh, we are in contact with these babies and babies haven't this problem of the ankylosis. Uh, but uh, they really didn't know about how to prevent or how to brush and how to to use. And now uh, I think that uh, all these years uh, we, we could uh, do a, 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 a big uh, job uh, with the association, uh, trying to 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 try to do the early intervention. So uh, in this case, that was to see the children uh, in the last congress. The, so from 25, I think that we saw not all with ankylosis, but. A, a high percentage. I have not the numbers now, but um, no, I think that the, the 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 first persons, and I think Clive has told you, was the Bart Nathbaum from Philadelphia, and uh, I remember um, before uh, he had the problem, the the medical problem. Uh, he was able to come to Buenos Aires with a team and because I, I was really interested in, in solve these kind of patients and uh, he has a problem and we I see well I we have to do that for from ourselves the solution of these patients so in this case uh, the preventive, uh, the, the preventing actions uh, were not highlighted in, in this. Uh, I, I remember that all the questions were from ankylosis or from the, the problem or the disease. So uh, in the second Congress, uh, I, be, I began to talk about the preventive, all the preventive things. We have the varnishes and all the things you know. Uh, so uh, Bart, I think that they uh, have uh, uh, done the first guidelines uh, a lot of years uh, ago and now client uh, began to update and began to discuss how to to put in a in a very easy way because we we need to to get more contact with the patients but in an easy way that they can understand and they can do it despite the the, the the city they live. I, I, I really learned a, a lot from you, from the, the patients with FOP, because uh, most of them have energy to do a lot of things despite the disease. And uh, they have problems, and in my case, they have uh, dental problems, but uh, they really uh, wanted to solve it and they really wanted to have uh, a life like anybody. So uh, I think that uh, go to to do the, uh, to see the dentist in an early time, so to, to more than the patients from the parents and try to, to get uh, the, the best things we can offer uh, to them. Uh, in an early uh, in an early stage, so for I think that they can have a very good uh, quality of life if we can act uh, preventively uh, early. Thank you, Gabriela, and that brings us to the end of this podcast on FOP. Ladies and gentlemen, please don't forget to leave your comments below and share this to spread the awareness. We'll be back again with another podcast within a month. In the meantime, if you would like to check out resources, short videos on FOP, or in-depth interviews with either Clive or Gabriella, do subscribe to our YouTube channel, IADH Now. Until next time, this is your host, Sharat Pani, signing off.